Okay, so without further ado, let, let me introduce the first speaker, Dr. Ohad Barzilai. Ohad is a technology manage management and information system specialist. He holds a PhD in computer science and software engineering, and he is a faculty member of the Rekanati Business School here in Tel Aviv University. Ohad is going to present surprising results from his recent study about Kickstarter called Playing Both Sides of the Market, Success and Reciprocity on Crowdfunding Platforms. Hi, uh, I'm Ohad. A few words about myself. Um, I am originally a software engineer. I worked for several software companies. Uh, I taught in this Actually, in this room, uh, Java for a few years. My office was second floor. Uh, then I joined Rakanati Business School. I joined the uh, um, uh, Technology Management and Information System uh, department. Uh, I teach two courses on the MBA, Agile and Lean Software Management and Digital Platforms in Business. Uh, the second one would be handy in this uh, uh, particular talk. Um, I'm currently interested in uh, contemporary software development, digital platforms, big data, crowd and social networks, and I also have a video blog in Hebrew, Intertent, and another one called Rekanati TV, so uh, you are welcome to check it out. Um, today, today we're gonna have a, a crash course on um, information systems and digital platforms, a taste, then we, we're going to inspect how this applies to uh, crowdfunding platforms. And at the end, as uh, Chaim promised you, uh, very promising and interesting uh, results from uh, our recent uh, study, Success and Reciprocity on Crowdfunding Platforms, a joint work with uh, Dr. David Svelochowski from uh, Rekanati as well, and Yael Inbar from Rekanati who also did some of these slides, so uh, thanks, Yael, thanks, Yael. And, okay, let's begin with. Uh, the physical world is being projected into this computer, on, on, into everyday computer, cell phone, PC, whatever, and it changes the world, um, and we want to measure, to learn, to really understand how. How does this um, digita digitization of the world is changing itself? 15 years ago, it wasn't so much of um, excitement. It was about ERP and uh, CRM, which are not, by the way, technology or, or computer systems. They are about the business process. They are about the managerial uh, decisions that are only encoded. This, the, the CRM and the ERP are the the software is only the front end of these business processes. Recently, it became much more interesting because uh, take shopping, for example. Amazon captures the essence of shopping and bring it to the online uh, world, but also adds some elements of its own. The better together people like you also, but do you want to buy also, or, or, or take, for example, eBay eBay would not, can't have happened in the physical world because you need everyone to have access to the internet, everyone can be a shopper and a, a shop owner. And this, once these uh, websites mature, they become platforms. And platforms bring with them new mechanisms. They redesign the uh, physical process. They bring new abstractions. They create ecosystem and they are used in surprising ways. To be concrete, think about Facebook. Facebook brought your social life into the computer, but it also changed your social life. It introduced new abstraction as like, or what is the definition of a friend in Facebook? Uh, you can think about uh, marketing campaigns targeted at gaining likes on Facebook, all revolutions in the Arab Spring that Facebook was not uh, invented in order to, to encourage them. So um, let's see how it applies to crowdfunding uh, platforms. Crowd 
funding, lots of people give little money over the internet. Uh, our next uh, speaker is going to speak about uh, many aspects of, uh, of uh, these uh, platforms, so I, w I won't uh, steal any punches um, uh, from them, uh, but only a f uh, only few statistics that Heim stole few of them from me, but nevertheless. Uh, so this is a screen capture of uh, Kickstarter statistics from yesterday. Um, uh, we can see that $600 million of, uh, were, were, were uh, spent on more than 100,000 uh, projects, which is kind of an interesting phenomenon. Kickstarter also gains some, um, the attention of the, of the media. 10% of the Sundance uh, Film Festival were crowdfunded. Uh, two nominations for the Oscar, one book, one comic book in the top uh, bestsellers of the New York Times. So, if you think Kickstarter, you probably think about I don't know Pebble. They want only one hundred thousand dollars, but raised one uh, ten million dollars. It is a huge, huge success. It is the biggest uh, success of um, uh, Kickstarter. But let's look into the, the numbers. Here you, you can see in, in this row a number of projects by the uh, amount raised. So out of 44,000 successful projects in Kickstarter, most of the projects, oh, I have this one. Hmm. Most of the projects are here. 30,000 projects raised between $1,000 to $10,000. It's pocket money for VCs. When you think about Kickstarter, don't think about, uh, there are some very nice successes, 40 projects with more than $1 million, 600, uh, six, more than 600 projects with more than, from the, with more than 100K, which both these categories are relevant for um, um, VC, con startup context, not, not VC, VCs. Um, but when I think about Kickstarter, I think about this project. These six little girls, um, elementary school in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, had a science project. They wanted to send a big balloon to the stratosphere with a camera, take photos of Earth, and bring it back. They needed $3,600, and they raised more than $5,000. This is a typical Kickstarter Project. Don't think startup, don't think VC. Kickstarter is not for this project. These are the outliers of the platform. 100,000 projects, and only 700 of them are, are in the scale that interests uh, new startups. So, Kickstarter uh, chose a model of all or nothing, uh, which means that the project owner needs to set the goal that he or she wants to raise and need to set a date. If by this date the, the amount was not raised, no one pays nothing. The money is returned to the backers. About half of the platforms are using this model, but there are also other uh, combinations. In this particular case, the project owner wanted $66,000, raised only $21,000. Time is up, no one pays Nothing, and uh, if you think about 44% in a VC context, it is a huge, huge number. But for this guy, he is the one that among the 56%, and we want to help him. We want to know what makes a fundraising campaign in a crowdfunding context successful. So this is our research question. What makes a crowdfunding campaign successful? And by successful, I mean raising the goal within the funding period. There are about 4% of the projects that raise the money and do not deliver. But this is um, a risk that you, you take, and this is a relatively small risk. 4% is quite small. So uh, let's think about crowdfunding. It's starting with fundraising, like this Red Cross guys that uh, are asking for money. It 
continued with Twitter, for example, that this is a UN refugee agency that are crowdfunding in Twitter two years ago, and they had some nice success. And uh, nowadays, this is, this is how Kickstarter looks like in this project. We can see a, 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 an, an initiative to create a tripod for, the, for your iPhone in the shape of a key. Uh, this tripod uh, is needed $30,000 in order to materialize. It's, it has 26 days to go and $6,000 already raised. We said platforms, and, we, and, and, and I mean that Kickstarter, by design, chose what to highlight and what to hide. For example, it is, they want to highlight how much money already was uh, collected, how much is needed, how much time is needed. They want to highlight the properties of the owner. And in particular, they want to say how many projects did this owner create in the, in, in the past? But also, look, 29 other, pr this project owner backed 29 projects of others. He gave money, he or she, I don't know, it's his company, um, gave money to, uh, to 29 other projects. If you click this, uh, this link, you can uh, um, navigate to these projects. And if you uh, click on this project, you can see their bakers. Every project has a bakers link here. If you click it, you can see all the bakers. And if you choose a baker, a funder, a guy or a girl gives, gave money, you can go to his or her profile and see how many projects did he or she created, how many projects he or she backed. This guy, Simon Kwan, uh, is also a creator by, by, by himself. He uh, backed 55 projects and uh, created four of his own. Uh, his or theirs, their own, because they're a company, so, okay. So, if we want to analyze the success factors, we need to take a multidimensional approach because fundraising by, its, by, by itself is not enough. If you read the fundraising literature, you, you're probably familiar with the criteria for fundraising success. The, most of it is the um, properties of the entrepreneur. Uh, the experience he or she has learning, for example, if I had many projects in my past, many successes, maybe if I failed a few times, I, I, know, better, I know better now. So it, may, it might help me, uh, reputation, Social capital, how many friends do I have? Friends in the real world, friends on Facebook, friends among the VC community, friends among other uh, project owners, among other entrepreneurs. But this is only one dimension. Once we are doing this fundraising online, we are in the business of online communities. Digital platform nurture online communities. People come to the site over and over again, 25% of the bakers in Kickstarter are repeated bakers. They backed one project, they back another, and another, and another. Um, and it, a, a recent uh, result here in Tel Aviv says that socially involved users are more likely to pay. So if I can engage people with, with the platform, I will increase their propensity to to pay, and I may think about viral marketing, about identifying key figures in the community, community leaders, have salesperson mavens, it's the viral marketing language, and address them and they would create a trend that would help my project. So, our research, recently uh, uh, submitted to a very um, respectable uh, information system conference, crawled all Kickstarter, all the data we downloaded, all the data it took us a few months. Um, we cleaned a bit of the data because some of the projects asked for less than $100. Some of the projects were not interesting. They had zero backers or one backer. So we ended up with 68,000 projects, 60,000 project owners, which means that some of the project owners are serial entrepreneurs. They have one project after 
another, we can see that there are three million backers, uh, which um, on average back two projects. There are some that have much, much more. We did some big data analysis, and what we were interested in were these people playing both sides of the market. Backers that are also owners by themselves. We asked ourselves, why do they do that? One thing that comes to mind is direct reciprocity. You gave money to my project, I gave money to your project. But we also found that there, there is an indirect reciprocity. I see that you give money for many projects, Although you did not give money to my project, I acknowledge your contribution to the community, and I pay you back. It's like karma thing. Uh, the really interesting thing starts here because it's go also on the opposite direction, which means if I want to create a project one month from now, what would be a strategic behavior of mine? Start backing other projects. The numbers are amazing. If you back other projects, you increase your success rate by 84%, and this is a significant three stars um, uh, a, a result. Every project that you bake increase your success rate by 6%. I know a, an entrepreneur, an Israel entrepreneur, that already backed 132 <laughs> projects. Most of them were given only one dollar. Mm -hmm. But he knows the thing. He knows that he, wa he, he wants to create a community. He wants to create a visibility. He wants to be part of this game. This is another example. As, as much project as I back, the more backers would back me. This is really, really significant and interesting. Uh, another, uh, so le let's sum it uh, for a second and then a, a last result. Projects rated by owners with backing history have higher chance to secure financing, have more bakers, have higher goals, and raise more money. So, out of three million, three million backers in Kickstarter and six, 60,000 um, owners, we have 34 people that are both backers and owners. These are the leaders. Because they're different for people who are just backers, and they are different for people that are just owners. They create more projects and succeed more than the owners, and they, book, and they back more project than only backers. They are the power users. They are the community people. I have the numbers, but our time is up. So let's uh, sum it up. We think about crowdfunding as an as a owner and a crowd. Actually, this owner is some backer in another project, and in a macro, there is a network. It's not a crowd, it's a network. So, we, we heard about the crowdfunding platform, we heard that it brought new uh, dimensions to this fundraising game. Backing others pays off, sub-community of backers, owners, they are the power user, you should address them, you should cling to them, you should back their projects because they would back you and they would create a buzz <laughs> for you. Thank you very much. We have a question session at the end, so... Um